Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Rehab podcast. Today we're joined by exercise physiologist Hayley Evans and we're going to be talking all about exercise after a cardiac event. So Hayley, tell us, is it safe to exercise if you have a heart condition? Yes, it is safe to exercise if you have a heart condition unless a doctor or cardiac practitioner has advised you not to. You may be told to avoid exercise if you have unstable angina, severe hypertension, which is a really high blood pressure, and a new or uncontrolled arrhythmia, which is when your heart beats in an irregular rhythm. Once these conditions have been treated appropriately via medication or intervention, it will then be safe for you to exercise. If you are ever unsure about whether you have any of these conditions, please speak to your doctor or a member of your cardiac rehabilitation team before exercising. If your heart condition is stable and you are taking all of your prescribed medications, then you will be encouraged to exercise on a regular basis. As exercise as part of a healthy lifestyle is found to benefit your heart condition and help to reduce the risk of further cardiac events. So how soon after an acute cardiac event can somebody start exercising again? Well, at UHM, our cardiac rehab team provide a set of very light and simple exercises for you to start even whilst you're in hospital. This is to begin building up your exercise levels ready for you to go home. Following an acute heart event such as a heart attack, it is important that you gradually increase your exercise levels following your discharge from hospital. Once you are home, walking is a safe and effective way for you to improve your fitness. It is advisable that you start with shorter, easier walks for 10 to 15 minutes and preferably on flat ground. It is then advised to gradually increase your walks by increasing either the distance that you walk by slightly quickening your pace or adding some slight inclines into your walk too. And what are the benefits of exercising for somebody with a heart condition? The benefits of meeting the exercise recommendations for someone with a heart problem can typically be identified as short-term and long-term benefits. So, if we start with the short-term benefits, these include an increased metabolism, So this is your ability to convert calories into energy. It also includes getting a better and deeper sleep. And it also increases the feel-good brain chemicals called endorphins that help to relieve stress and increase productivity. The long-term benefits include a reduced risk of coronary heart disease and stroke. It also lowers the risk of type 2 diabetes some cancers and dementia, just to name a handful of the long-term conditions that benefit from regular exercise. It has also been found to improve your overall quality of life and lower the risk of depression too. So there are lots of benefits of exercise, but what are the best types of exercise for somebody with a heart condition? And also, how much exercise is recommended? The best types of exercises for someone with a heart condition include aerobic exercise and strength exercise. It is also important to include elements of flexibility and mobility too. It is recommended to complete 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise every week. This can be broken down into 30 minutes a day for five days a week. Aerobic exercise recommendations also include, as an alternative, the completion of 75 minutes of higher intensity exercise per week, but I would recommend that you speak to a member of the cardiac rehabilitation team before starting a high intensity exercise program to see if this type of regime is safe and appropriate for you and your heart condition. Strength-based exercises for those with heart conditions is also recommended, as previously mentioned. Ideally, a strength-based exercise regime should include 8 to 10 strength exercises such as squats or sit to stand to a chair for lower body strength building or using weights or tins of bean to do bicep curls and other upper body movement too. 
These types of exercises should be performed as one set of 10 to 15 repetitions to start with and you would build on the sets and repetitions and also the weight you were moving as you felt comfortable to do so. Ideally, you would be completing these types of exercises at least two or three times a week. Recent research has found that a combined approach of doing both aerobic and strength exercise over the course of the week is highly beneficial for those with heart conditions. So you've mentioned a few different types of exercise there, but what are the different components of exercise and what do they include? Typically, cardiac rehabilitation exercise sessions will start with a warm-up component. The warm-up is a very important part of an exercise regime if you have a heart condition. A warm-up lasting 15 minutes which gradually increases in intensity is recommended to safely increase your heart rate and your breathing rate ready for exercise. The warm-up will also increase coronary blood flow, which is the blood that flows through the coronary artery back to the heart muscle. And it also increases the blood flow to the muscle throughout your body that you will be using during your exercise plan. Once the warm-up is complete, it is then on to the conditioning component of the workout, which is typically 20 to 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise. Cardiovascular exercise can include a brisk or more challenging walk, the use of exercise equipment such as treadmills or exercise bike, or an aerobic style circuit. During the cardiovascular component, you will be ideally exercising at a moderate intensity. Now you can usually recognise that you are exercising at a moderate intensity through how your body and breathing feels. You should notice that your temperature increases and you feel warmer, which would mean you would normally start to feel a little bit of sweat and have a flushed complexion or rosy cheek. You would also notice that you have become slightly more short of breath than at rest, which is a normal reaction to exercise. Exercise sessions can also include a strength component and can be completed as a standalone session or can also be integrated into a session following the cardiovascular exercise. If strength exercise is following cardiovascular exercise, then a five minute Pre-strength exercise cool down is required to slightly lower your heart rate before starting the strength based exercises. Once the conditioning and strength components have been completed, it is equally as important to cool down as it is to warm up. A cool down should be a minimum of 10 minutes and should gradually decrease in intensity to lower your pulse to a nearly resting heart rate. An effective cool down reduces the likelihood of a hypertensive episode, which is when you might feel lightheaded or feel faint. A 10 minute gradual cool down also reduces the risk of your heart rate going into an abnormal rhythm, which is more likely if you just suddenly stop exercise without a cool down. And where could somebody look for good examples of home exercises that are safe for them to do? The UHNM Cardiac Rehabilitation Team have developed a range of home exercise programmes and videos that are safe to do with a heart condition. All of these videos can be accessed via our Facebook and YouTube page. Simply type UHNM Cardiac Rehabilitation into the search box and have access to chair-based standing and higher functioning aerobic workouts. Strength-based and functional workouts are on there too. There are also Tai Chi workouts and videos on how to improve your balance and posture. There are also other useful videos that show you how to exercise safely and effectively by including warm ups and cool downs into your exercise session. So can regular exercise be an alternative to some of the medications that might be prescribed, for instance, for blood pressure, high cholesterol or heart rates? Cardiac rehabilitation promotes a holistic approach to managing a heart condition and would not recommend that participating in regular exercise should be an alternative to taking your prescribed cardiac medications. 
regular exercise combined with cardio protective medications is recommended and is found to be beneficial for your blood pressure, heart rate and cholesterol management. You should continue to take your cardiac medications unless advised otherwise by an appropriate healthcare professional such as a cardiologist or your GP. What should somebody do if they experience chest pain and or sudden shortness of breath during exercise? If you were to get chest pain or so short a breath that you couldn't talk during exercise, then you should stop the exercise and find a place to sit down. For some people, simply stopping the exercise and sitting down will help to relieve the chest pain or ease the shortness of breath. However, if after sitting down, the symptoms are still there, then we would advise you to follow the GTN spray protocol. Spray one or two squirts underneath your tongue and wait five minutes. If the pain has gone away after five minutes, rest for a further few minutes. And if you feel well enough, then you can consider rewarming yourself back up and continuing the exercise at a lower intensity or slower pace. That being said, if the chest pain or shortness of breath has not gone away after five minutes, then you would repeat the GTM spray protocol again. So you would spray another one or two squirts underneath your tongue and wait for a further five minutes. If the pain still hasn't gone after the second squirt of the GTM spray, then you would call 999 and ask for an ambulance. And finally, are there any forms of exercise that somebody with a heart condition should avoid altogether? Avoiding some forms of exercise can be dependent on the heart condition or procedure you have received. For example, if you have had open heart surgery such as a coronary artery bypass graft or valve surgery, it is advised to avoid any exercises that put strain on the chest muscles or sternum for at least six weeks following surgery. Your cardiac rehabilitation practitioner will be able to advise you on how to build your levels up gradually regarding upper body exercises. It is advised that those that have had a device fitted such as a pacemaker or defibrillator to avoid continuous repetitive movements with the arms. For example, in a gym, a rowing machine would be avoided as it is a repetitive movement. Both front and back crawl in a swimming pool will be avoided along with any contact boards. If you are unsure of whether you should be avoiding any different types of exercise, please contact the Cardiac Rehabilitation Team for more information. Great, that's been really interesting Hayley. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us and hopefully we've answered some questions surrounding exercise following a cardiac event and why it's so important. Thank you for listening.